Hey Scott, can you build us one of these? Um, yeah. Sure. Materials used for this episode include cardboard, duct tape, several gift wrap rolls, two Pringles cans, black duct tape, cardboard, adhesive foam squares, electrical tape, cardboard, newsprint, a ruler, scissors, an X-Acto blade, a pen or pencil, and cardboard. First, cut out a large rectangle of cardboard, 33 inches by 16 inches. Use the width measurement as a diameter to draw a circle on another piece of cardboard and cut it out. Line up three sides of the rectangle with the edges of the circle. Trace the circle onto the rectangle piece and cut away any excess at the bottom. Trace the top half of the circle to serve as a marker. Draw the following pattern on the rectangle piece with these dimensions. Use an X-Acto blade to cut out these sections. Remember to exercise caution when using an X-Acto blade. Cut each section as one piece and be sure to mark where it goes. These will be serving as templates. Draw a circle with a diameter of 12 inches in the middle of the circle on the rectangle piece and cut it out. Now, set everything aside except the cutout of this section. Trace it onto a piece of cardboard 20 or 30 times. All cardboard is different, so you'll need to make your own estimate. Your goal is a stack 5 inches high. After you've traced enough templates, cut all of them out. Check occasionally that they will fit within the cutout of your main template. If they do not, modify them until they do. Repeat this process for this section, again making sure each piece fits in the confines of the cutout area. This piece should stack to 5 inches. Repeat again for this section, however, this stack should only be 3 inches. Repeat again for this section, again stacking to 3 inches high. At this point, you should have 4 stacks in 4 positions on the template. Next, cut out these sections of the main template piece. Use the cutout circle from the main body to trace and cut out a second. Cut a length of cardboard to 5 inches wide and 37 inches long. It should be the same perimeter as the cutout area of the big circle on the template. Cut additional cardboard as needed to complete the circle and duct tape it together. Using the circles you just cut out, tape the perimeter piece to one of them on the inside all the way around. Flip it upside down and tape it around the outside as well. Cut away any excess and tape the perimeter circle together. Make sure this piece fits inside the main template. I can't stress enough how important this is to our process. Fill the circle box with newsprint for extra stability. Place the second circle on top and seal it together with duct tape. Use the cutout from this section and create a stack 5.5 inches high. Repeat the process for this section, creating a stack 4 inches high. Use your main template to draw and cut out a second one. Lay the template on top of this new one and trace all of the cutout areas, including the large circle. Place the circle piece on its designated spot and place the main template over it. If it doesn't fit, you'll need to modify the template piece until it does. Once you know it fits, duct tape the circle piece in place on the new template. Remember that the two body templates always need to align. If they're off, you're going to have a lot of headaches down the road. For the top box, tape all the pieces together. I found it easier to tape a few together at a time, and then tape the pieces together. Make sure they align with the main template, then tape them down on the second. I recommend using long strips of tape, moving all the way from one side down to the other. Cover the entire thing this way for maximum stability. Repeat this process for the next section down, always testing the alignment of the main template. Next is this side section.
then the section below it. For this section, stack up all the pieces. Before you tape them down, you need to accommodate two gift wrap rolls. Lay down four or five pieces, then set a gift roll halfway down. Stack more pieces above the roll until the stack is higher. Cut all of these pieces so that they still align at the end, but stop where the gift wrap roll will be. Once you have that, double it, as two gift wrap rolls need to be accommodated. Tape all of these pieces together, as well as the remaining intact pieces, so you now have this shape. Set it in place and tape it down as best you can. There's no one way to tape this part down. Line the back gap with duct tape, sticky side out. Do not cover the adhesive. We'll use it to attach the gift rolls later. Check the alignment again. For this section, stack five or six pieces. Take the middle 20 or so and cut them all in this U pattern. Create one and use it as a template for the rest so they all match. Tape the U shapes together on both sides a few at a time. Combine the sets and wrap the entire thing in duct tape. Lay the pieces on the five or six already stacked and place the few remaining pieces on top of it. Wrap the whole thing together with duct tape, covering one end. This will be the bottom. Leave the top open so there's now a square space in the piece. Tape the piece down as you have all the others. It's okay if it hangs off the edge a little, just secure the other three sides. Cut two lengths of gift wrap roll to six inches each. Tape them in place so that the tape extends down the side and a couple inches away in several directions. Wrap them each an extra time at the base for stability. Now, at long last, flip the main template over and cover it in adhesive squares at every corner, side, and weak point. Flip the piece back over and lay it down over all the pieces. Press down hard in all the nooks and crannies of the pack. Measure the distance from the outer edge of the circle to the point of the triangle. Take your original circle with a 16 inch diameter and trace a copy. From the midpoint, use the measurement you took above to recreate the triangle. The curve extends from the high point to the midpoint at the side of the circle. Mark 2.5 inches inward around the circle to draw a smaller circle inside. Cut out the template, including the middle circle. Make sure the piece fits over the cyclotron before continuing. Use a gift wrap roll to trace two circles on the triangle. The first should be near the top with the 3 inch diameter. The second should be nearer the bottom with a 4 inch diameter. Use an X-Acto blade to cut them out. Trace the shape 20 more times on cardboard and cut out the pieces. Duct tape the perimeter of the entire proton pack for extra stability. Cut two more pieces of gift roll, 6 inches each. Place one template over the cyclotron and trace where the two gift wrap rolls will stand. Duct tape the gift wrap roll pieces in place. Place the template over the gift rolls and cyclotron and repeat for the rest. They should come halfway up the side of the cyclotron. Duct tape the pieces from the top all the way around to the back of the pack and around the entire cyclotron. For extra stability, I added adhesive squares between each template piece at the point, as well as the piece connected to the main body. Place a cardboard plate on top of this section with the same dimensions. Use adhesive foam to attach it. Wrap all of its remaining sides in black duct tape. Near the top, make sure the duct tape covers the corrugation of the cardboard. Cut foam squares in half and line the top three sides of the plate with these squares. Add a second layer to each for more depth. Along the side, place matching squares on all three sides, doubled, just like the top. Be sure to remove all of the wax backing from the adhesive because it won't hold paint. Create a plate for the second middle section and attach it with foam squares. Wrap its sides in black duct tape. Place adhesive squares on the top and side of the plate, double stacked. Repeat on the opposing side. Place half squares along the bottom and double them up. Add their counterpart pieces to the side, double stacked. Add one more stack to each side for the corner. Cut a gift roll so you have a piece the same length as the two sections on the pack. Wrap the piece in electrical tape. Cap one end of the piece. Whenever I say cap, this is what I mean. Run a length of electrical tape across the end of the roll, then another perpendicular to it. Add two more in an X shape to the first two so it's completely covered, then add a couple extra wraps around the side. Place a piece of black duct tape upside down between the two sections. 
Tape the ends to the sides they're on, trying to keep the bridge piece as flat as possible. Place the gift roll piece on the bridge with its open end facing the edge of the pack. Place a piece of duct tape over the gift roll so that the end rests on the surface of their respective boxes. Cut a plate for the holster piece and attach it with foam squares. Wrap the sides in black duct tape. Be sure to leave open the space at the top. Create a plate for the front and top of this section, then attach it with adhesive foam. Cut two lengths of a gift roll, each 13 inches, and wrap them in electrical tape. Use adhesive foam to attach them on the sides and push them against the back wall, which you remember we left as exposed duct tape. Cut a plate piece for the outside wall of this section in this space. Notice that the top is an inch lower than the piece to hide the tops of the tubes. Use adhesive foam to attach it. Cover the inside in black duct tape as well as the bottoms of the U-shape and the inside wall. For this next section, cut a piece of cardboard as long as the section. Fold it into thirds and size it with the Pringles can. Make sure the two side walls are slightly higher than the Pringles can. Cover the piece with black duct tape both front and back. Tape this new piece to the box section at the bottom and top and wrap the remaining sides in black duct tape. Attach the two Pringle cans together with a length of black duct tape. Cut off the top four inches of the top Pringle can. Line the top of the connected cans with black duct tape. Wrap the connected cans in black electrical tape. Place the connected cans inside the section with the bottom on top of the section below. Connect the sides with lengths of electrical tape as shown. To keep the tape from sticking to the Pringles can, insert small cardboard spacers between them. Cut a piece of cardboard 4 inches wide and 16 inches long. Fold it into three pieces as shown. Place this piece over the bottom of the Pringles can so that it encases the bottom section. Cut an additional piece to serve as the bottom. Cut a rounded section out of the middle section. Tape the bottom piece to the rest as shown, then fold it inward. Tape up the sides so you now have a box shape with a tape on the inside. Wrap the sides in black duct tape, but leave the top alone. Place adhesive foam on the bottom of the section below the Pringles can, and on both outside side walls. Set the box in place, half circle cut facing upward, and press the sides against the adhesive foam. From when we were cutting circles for the cyclotron piece, you should have several left over. Use four to create this detail on the box. Stack them too high with adhesive foam connecting them to each other and to the box. Cut thin strips of electrical tape to go around the sides. Wrap the two gift rolls beneath the Pringles can with black duct tape. Cap the one closest to the edge with electrical tape, then add another piece of black duct tape to the side for consistency. This concludes part one of my Proton Pack demo. Stay tuned to part two for detail work and paint. See you next time!